What's up everyone? Today we are going over the top 10 MMOs that are being played in Korea today. Moving forward, we're going to be covering all things that are related to MMOs, including new releases in Korea, previewing upcoming games, reviewing old ones, everything. If you're a fan of MMOs, like and subscribe to the channel to stay updated and also let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about the games that you're about to see on this list. Follow me on Twitch to connect with me personally. I'm streaming on that platform five to six days a week and also join our MMO focus discord. We've got a great community there. It would be even better if you were a part of it. Without further ado, let's begin. Number 10, Mabinogi. Out of all the MMOs on this list, this is the one that surprised me the most. I've always known that this was a pretty solid game despite its age, but for it to make the top 10, didn't see that coming. Mabinogi is an older anime MMO that was released in 2004. Mabinogi really shows its age and is clearly lacking in the graphics department for an open world 3D MMO when compared to the modern day games. But the fact that this is still a top 10 MMO in Korea is a testament to how well they designed the game. Anyone you talk to that has played this game will tell you that Mabinogi is a very deep MMO that offers a lot of content and features that traditional MMOs even today don't offer. Mabinogi pretty much covers everything from PvE to PvP content. You can really do whatever you want in Mabinogi. The player driven and social aspect of it is what really separates it from everything else and is probably the reason why it's still alive today. The first and to be honest I'm pretty sure still the only sandbox anime MMORPG that was made. Population wise, Mabinogi in the West is for sure considered to be a small niche one, only having a few hundred active players playing via Steam according to the Steam charts. Even though it's a top 10 MMO in Korea, clearly it's become just an afterthought for most in the West. Number 9, Black Desert Online. As someone who has put a lot of hours into the English and Korean servers for Black Desert, I can confidently say that this game belongs on this list. To be honest, I thought it would be a bit higher. In the West, Black Desert has always had a healthy population both in viewership and player base. When I played in the later days on the KR server, I was very surprised to see how many active players were still playing. And let me tell you, the KR servers are exactly that. They are active. BDO has always had a lot of haters attacking it for its clear pay to win elements, but despite this, it's one of those games that you just always kind of come back to if you've played it and enjoyed it before. Kind of like how they say you always end up going back to WoW, that's also the case for a lot of people with BDO. The reason for this is definitely its unrivaled combat system. Despite the difficulty, the combat system in BDO is the main reason a lot of players cannot get away from it. Throw in the open world MMO features and gorgeous graphics on top, and now you have a unique game that stands out. Black Desert has come a very long way from its beginnings with a ton of quality of life improvements, graphical improvements, as well as updates to its content with progression. While this game is a dream for PvP enthusiasts that don't really care about pay to win, it's absolutely terrible for PvE and Raid Seekers. Life skilling is the main PvE content in BDO, which is surprisingly really fun with its own progression paths separate to your combat gear and ability. All in all, Black Desert online being in the top 10 in Korea, I really don't think surprises too many people. Number 8, Lineage 2. When it comes to the household names and the MMO genre, everyone has heard of the Lineage franchise. If this game had to be summarized in one word, that word would be epic. Lineage 2 for the longest time has been a stable top 10 game in Korea and has survived the test of time in both the Eastern and even in the Western regions. In the West, it's become a smaller niche game, but it's still does have a decent population for an older game. Lineage 2 is a game that stayed true to the massively multiplayer part. Large scale raids, taking down world bosses, epic PvP, GVG siege wars. This game not only was a staple in the genre, but also a major influencer to modern day MMOs. It's no surprise that if any classic MMO were to still be popular, it would be Lineage 2. Despite all of this, comparing it to our present day games, it obviously feels unpolished, slow, and a bit clunky, not to mention its heavy pay to win mechanics. Outside of this game being made in the 50s, the pay to win part is probably what makes this a smaller niche game in the West while still being a top 10 game in Korea. Number seven, Odin Valhalla Rising. Speaking of epic games, while Lineage 2 offers the epic gameplay 
experiences, Odin will make you feel like you are in an epic world. The only mobile game that makes the list on the top 10, Odin Valhalla Rising certainly does not look like a mobile game. In fact, graphically, it looks better than most PC MMOs we have today. Odin Valhalla is an open world Norse mythology based MMO that has amazing visuals thanks to its Unreal 4 engine. Developed by Lionheart Studio and published by Kakao, the game launched in Korea in 2021 and let's just say it was a massive one, garnering millions of players earning over a hundred million dollars within its first month. Yes, the launch had millions in Korea in one single country. I can personally attest to this because I was one of the many playing on launch day. Odin is a mobile first game that is playable via PC, but the game's interface UI and controls are clearly designed for the mobile devices, especially the combat system. If this game were to really take off in the West for PC users, they would need to change the combat system so it wasn't an auto lock, auto attack experience. Trust me, it's not great. Outside of this and a few other obvious mobile game features, this game screams AAA polish. Offering both PvE and PvP content, I can't mention enough how impressive this game looks. So impressive that I really wanted to convince myself of two things, that the combat wasn't shit, and that it wasn't another mobile pay to win game, which it unfortunately is. Number six, Lineage. As someone who lives in Korea right now, I can tell you that this game has been in or close to the top five since I can remember. It's mind blowing to me how a game that was made in the ancient times is still one of the top games being played today. Being only playable on private servers in the West, NCSoft actually shut down its official Lineage servers for North America back in 2011. Gameplay wise, Lineage is very reminiscent of the classic games Ultima and Diablo 2 with its 2D isometric POV. Lineage is a full-fledged MMORPG that has a strong emphasis on PvP that comes mainly from the focus on Siege Wars. In Lineage, all players are allowed to engage each other anywhere outside of safe zones, making the world PvP a big part of its experience. There really isn't much to say about Lineage other than the fact that not only is this game a classic, but it's literally goaded as an MMO in Korea. Number 5, World of Warcraft. What's crazy is that it doesn't really feel like this game is that popular in Korea, and that's coming from someone who lives here. The king of MMOs in the West, World of Warcraft is a game that really needs no introduction. This traditional theme park MMO is and always has been the gold standard for MMOs in the West, with both a massive PvE scene and a very active competitive PvP scene. Released in 2004, WoW has come a very long way, and it's very evident that the game has made major upgrades since then to keep up with the times. Widely known to be the MMO that won't ever die due to its cult-like following, from a viewership and content perspective, WoW has always been at the top of the charts across all platforms for the MMO genre. From a gameplay perspective, to be honest, I feel it's almost pointless to explain as everyone pretty much knows the general structure for WoW. A two-faction based game with a good story and lore taking place in an ever-expanding massive world. WoW is known to go through cycles based off of its expansions where the be a ton of hype and returning players coming back for that expansion only for them to eventually complain about the game after playing it a while quitting then restarting that same cycle all over again for the next expansion to be fair though this type of circle kind of applies to most mmos just on different scales Number 4, Dungeon Fighter. When you think of 2D side-scrolling MMOs, Dungeon Fighter is definitely one of the first you think of. This is yet another game that was and still is a smash hit in Korea, but not so much in the West. Dungeon Fighter released in 2005 and has really stood out for its classic arcade beat-em-up cartoon anime look. Like most side-scrolling MMOs, you won't find that massive open world feel to this, but instead more of a lobby or hub system where you'll teleport into levels or instances to actually complete content. Outside of the cool artwork and awesome skill effects, DFO's combat system is what really carries it. Most of the time you'll be entering some kind of instance using stamina and clearing them in good old beat-em-up fashion collecting loot. While the PvE can be a lot of fun, DFO's PvP is also very entertaining whether you're watching or playing. If you've ever wished to play an MMO version of a 2D fighting game, Dungeon Fighter would be right up your alley. Number 3, Ion. 
I think we can all agree that this game was one of, if not the most anticipated MMO in the world during its time. Offering a fully open world 3D MMO with solid graphics for its time while having a character customization that had never been done before, Ion was the game in 2008 when it released. Despite all the hype surrounding the game, Ion eventually died down in both regions, especially in the west, and began to gain a pay to win reputation as time went on. Many years later though, in 2021, Ion Classic was launched. While the game certainly wasn't dead in Korea, Ion Classic helped it rebound to be a steady top 5 game for the past year, whereas in the west the classic launch barely was a one month thing. Ion is a faction based game that takes place in a large open world with a major emphasis on PvP at the end game. Factions have their own rankings that are based off of points that are gained through completing tasks and killing the opposing faction. This gave a lot of incentive for competitive players to climb their ranking to be the standout players for their faction. Gearing up was also reliant on farming points which forced players to PvP in order to actually gear up for PvP. Overall, Ion is yet another game to die out in the west but maintain popularity in its home country. Number 2, Maple Story. Another 2D side scrolling game to make the list, Maple Story is ranked 2 in the Korean MMO rankings. This cutesy PvE focused game is the second oldest game on the list, and thanks to its excellent artwork and theme, it has aged very well. Unlike the other side scroller on this list, Maple Story has a vertical movement factor that opens the game up to jumping on platforms, thus, introducing some content that revolves around this. Expect a long grind and experience a lot of boss and dungeon clearing content. A lot of the game mechanics as well as the combat is widely known to be quite addictive along with all the events that happen. Maple also has an emphasis on alts, especially at the end game as farming ability and power can be increased by having multiple alts. The storyline structure is also unique with each class having their own. The biggest downside to Maple Story outside of the tedious grind would definitely be its pay to win elements. Not only can you buy power, but cosmetic items also come in the form of gacha and can empty your wallet in a hurry if you let it. The actual process of the gearing system is also notorious amongst many. In the West, Maple Story still maintains decent health, but is nowhere near the size of the main MMOs. Regardless, it is quite impressive for this game to have come this far and continue to do well globally. The number one MMO in Korea is none other than, surprise surprise, Lost Ark. After a massive launch in Korea, some bumps and bruises along the way, three years later there were still servers being added, legacy servers being locked, and even queue times during the primetime hours after a major update. A lot of this had to do with the introduction of Legion raids which is what gave Lost Ark a massive surge. Recently Korea has gone through a long content drought and has just released the newest Legion raid Akan. Despite this year long drought, it still stood strong at the top of the KR rankings uncontested. In the west, Lost Ark garnered over a million viewers on Twitch and concurrent players at its launch, shattering records. Post launch though, the game has been plagued by bots and RMT issues while tons of players and ended up quitting due to the monotonous grind of dailies and game. Outside of the bot issues though, Amazon has done a pretty decent job listening to its player base, although there were complaints, but for the most part, the changes that were made to the western version definitely makes it less pay to win than Korea. To be clear here, less pay to win does not mean non pay to win. Buying power is still 100% a thing. PvE rating is the standout feature in this game. Its raids are extremely unique due to its cinematic approach with its top down view with extremely challenging mechanics giving you an unforgettable experience. After normalizing post launch, Lost Ark still has one of the highest viewerships for MMOs while maintaining a healthy sized population of players. Steam chart numbers are definitely fake news due to the bots, so don't pay much attention to that, but the population is still pretty healthy. In Korea, Lost Ark is looking to become the next WoW of the East, as it's held on to this number one position uncontested for quite some time now, and it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. And that rounds out the top 10 MMOs in Korea. Don't forget to visit me on Twitch, join our Discord, like and subscribe to the video. You guys know what to do. I'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.